Hey, my name's James Wilkinson. I hope you're well. Just at the Landlord Show, um, seen some of you subscribers here. Thank you for saying hi while you've been here, if that was you. Um, this is a great show. It's good to get out and about and just see what's going on. I found some good software tools that I've been using over the last few years here. Um, so in this video, I want to talk about the real dangers to landlords in 2023. You see, there's some real bad things on the horizon and some of them are already here. And if you're a landlord, the more you know, the better. The better you can be prepared, the better you can deal with it, and we can give you some solutions as well. So while you're here, help me get to 5,000 subscribers, guys. We're so close to 5,000 subscribers now. So take that finger up out, smash that subscribe button. Go on, do it right there. Hit that subscribe button. Hit the bell notification as well. And while you're there, if you're already subscribed, hit that like button because that will help me get more views on this video and it will get some more subscribers and it will go around in a wonderful little circle. So what is the big issues that landlords are facing in 2023 and how's that gonna impact them going forward? Well, there's a number of things that are really, really bad news for landlords. Um, and one of them, they actually changed the legislation. Uh, well, they gave us a bit of an update the other day. Did a video on this. The first one I wanna talk about is EPCs, and they're called Energy Performance Certificates. Now, there was talk that by 2025, residential landlords would need to get their EPC rating up to a level C. Most landlords were just sleepwalking into a nightmare there. In fact, over half didn't even know that that was something that they needed to do, and they were under the impression that it was guidance, and it wasn't actually gonna be a rule. So, the government have had a little bit of an update on this and told us where they're expecting this to go. This still might take longer, uh, but they're saying in 2028 is when you need to get your energy performance certificate up to a level C or above. Now, if you know what an EPC is, or you've got an old Victorian property, you know that it's not likely that some properties will be able to get the EPC up to a level C. It's just not gonna happen if you've got an old Victorian building. So what they've also said is that if you can demonstrate that you've spent 10,000 pounds in order to get it as close to a level C and do some improvements with insulation, with solar, um, double glazing, all these different things, ground source heat pumps, whatever it is, if you can demonstrate that you spent 10,000 pounds, then that could make you compliant as well. So that's good news. We've got a bit more clarity. We still need more clarity uh, on this. I think that this won't even happen by 2028, but you should be looking to get that prepared. In fact, there are some mortgage vendors that will give you a better deal right now if you have an EPC as level C or above, which is good. Uh, so there is an incentive there to do that. Now, you might not have 10 grand just sitting there waiting to upgrade your house. So those instances, um, like I've got a portfolio. So for me, it could be a lot of money to do that. So I'll do some equity releases as I do equity releases. Over time, I'll use some of that money to buy new properties, but I'll use some to improve my existing stock as well. So that's two things that I'll be doing. So EPCs is one thing. Next is section 24. This is now in play. Section 24 means if you own a property in your personal name, that you've got to pay tax on the turnover, not on the profits like you would in a normal business. Previously, you were able to claim back all your mortgage payments, all your everything basically, and you could reduce your tax burden significantly. Now you can't. Probably one of the first years that this has been fully in play. And some landlords, it means they're just not gonna make any money on their deals at all. So that's an opportunity, because how you get around that one is if you own the property in a limited company. Now, very hard to move it from personal name to limited company. There are ways to do it through an LLP. Uh, it's a prolonged process, you need an expert to help you do that really. So that's opportunity for new landlords to come into the market, buy in a limited company where you can deduct all the expenses, where you do only pay 20% corporation tax. And that could be a little opportunity for some people to move properties into a more efficient tax structure using a limited company. So that's one negative for the landlords as well. Another negative there, EPCs, uh, and we've got that. Uh, we've got 
So we've got the EPCs and we've got the Section 24. Next is house prices are going down. But I'm not arguing with that. Some people uh, think when I do a video and I say the market's gone up or whatever, that I'm in the camp that prices can't move down. I'm not at all. I'm very open about that, very honest about it. I can't control the market. I don't know what's going to happen. But it hasn't gone down as quickly as people are expecting. However, it is going down. Like it has been going down the back end of last year. It probably will go down in the summer as well when we see lag data. And that's just life. And what I would get across to potential investors and people that want to make money using property is you should always be buying below market value anyway. You should be locking in your profits when you buy. And if you do that, you'll be protected against the market fall. Fix a good interest rate so you know where the predictability is. And then why are you bothered? If you know that you have got a good interest rate, you've got cash flow coming in, yes, the price might go down temporarily, but it will always go back up. And that's an important thing to understand. So it will really, really, really benefit you guys to hold property in the long term. Don't just keep it in flips and stuff like that. People that are doing flips, that's where it gets a little bit more dangerous. If the market shifted 10%, for example, in the quarter, or six month period that you were doing your flip, then that might mean that your flip suddenly doesn't stack up. Or if lending gets pulled, maybe there aren't so many people to buy your property that you're looking to flip. So that's a consideration. And the next thing is interest rates, right? That's another tough one for landlords. We've had 11 back-to-back -back months now, maybe it's 12, definitely 11 back-to-back -back months of interest rate rises. Inflation data this week wasn't great. We're still in double digit inflation. We were expecting it to drop to single digit. I mean, it's not quite as bad as some places were making out. Uh, some places were saying that we, uh, it's a few percentage points, like quarter of a percentage points that it didn't go down to drop us below into single digits, but it still didn't. And single digits is where we want to get to, right? And so inflation is still hitting us. That means the Bank of England may raise interest rates again. Yes, they might drop them by the end of the year, but right now they're high, they're higher than what people initially did their deals on. There's opportunity there though as well. There are gonna be some landlords that just wanna get out of the market because of that. And maybe you could buy their property. We're looking at a lease option ourselves at the moment. Um, where we've got a, a, a landlord that just wants to get out of the market because he's worried about rates, worried about EPCs and all these sorts of things. Pretty much got a deal agreed, um, not got through legals yet, but potentially that could be another deal that we'll show you on this channel as well. So look, the message is there are some things that are tough for landlords. EPCs, yes, you've got another three years though uh, onto what you had, so that's positive. Uh, interest rates hopefully have peaked, but they could go up. No one knows for sure, but hopefully they've peaked. Um, Section 24, you can buy properties in your own name. That's, uh, sorry, not in your own name, in a uh, limited company. That's one way to get around that. Uh, so that will help you significantly if you do that. But you've just got to look at the options that you've got, look how you can uh, actually get this stuff sorted uh, and working for you. Uh, and so, look, whatever happens in the market, more people make money in a down market than in an up market. And so if you want to get really wealthy in property, then this is an opportunity for you. If you feel the market's going to crash, maybe you're right. And then why not go out there, find some investors you can J with, be with, and go and get some of those deals. Go and get some of those discounted properties. Let me know your thoughts. Do you think it's tough to be a landlord in 2023? Uh, or do you think it's all overplayed and it's easier than ever before? Some people think that as well. There's rents are rising and there's other good stuff as well. Do like this video, guys. Do subscribe and hit the bell. Check out all the other content on my channel, including this video right here.